Hey guys, Greg Howe back again with another uh, sound advice with uh, Diadario. And one of the questions I get asked a lot is, what do I do to warm up? What's my warm up routine, you know? And the truth is, I don't really have one. I don't have uh, this time frame where I sort of sit and do specific exercises. I don't have that. But um, what I will do sometimes is certain exercises when I need to. Like, for instance, if I'm in a situation where, um, and I've been in this situation many times where I have a clinic and we're late and scheduling got strange. I'm getting off of a train and I have to go right to the music store and, and it's freezing out and I got to set my pedal board up and then I've got 10 minutes, if, if that, before I start. And I need something that's going to get my fingers moving. And this particular warm-up exercise that I that I stumbled across, I don't know where it came from exactly, but I do this when I'm, when I'm in those times and it does seem to get my left hand moving pretty quick. Um, let me just show you what it is. I'm going to come up here to the 10th fret the high E string in this case. And there's a few different versions of this, so we'll start with the simplest one first. And I'm just gonna play, I'm, I'm positioned at 10. I've got 10, 12, 13, and 15. So it's gonna be all four fingers involved. And it's kind of a strange exercise at first if you're not used to using all four of these fingers together. But once it gets comfortable, it's pretty cool. So I'm gonna start with the note that's on the 13th fret, the third finger note. And I'm going to play that with a downstroke, and that's the only pick that's going to be involved in this whole initial, the initial exercise here. So it's a seven note exercise. I play a downstroke, I play a hammer on with my fourth finger, I do a pull off back to 13, another pull off to 12, and then a hammer on to 13, and then pull all the way off to 10. So, so there's this sequence slowly. Sorry. So I'm just going to gradually pick that up in speed. And um, you'll see that if you try this, you'll, you'll notice quickly that you'll, you'll feel it in your forearms and it'll warm you up. It'll get your fingers moving. Um, let me just see what we can do. With so there's the exercise. Now, if you get really comfortable with that, you notice I'm only picking one time. I'm only picking on that 13th fret. And then so the other six notes are being are the result of hammer-ons and pull-offs. If you get really good at this and it starts to feel comfortable, attempt to try to do it with no picking what at all. Then you know your left hand's really working. Anyway, so we can add on to that and get some other versions of that. So and the next phase for me again, this is all just trying to get my left hand going quickly, um, would be a, a similar exercise where we're going to add two notes onto the sequence. So instead of having seven notes, we'll have nine notes. And we do that by having an additional hammer on to the B string, in this case, the 13th fret of the B string. So initial exercise. And instead of starting over, I'm going to hammer on to the 13th fret of the B string now. So, And then I'm going to go back to the high E string. 10th fret, and that's going to be with an upstroke. Now, it doesn't have to be an upstroke. You can, what, you can, the more notes there are, and the less picking there is in a sequence, the less important the direction of the pick is. I started with a downstroke, so I'm going to end with an upstroke, because this interesting thing about the sequence now is that even though there's only two picks in it, um, there, one of them's at the very beginning, the other one's at the very end, so they are consecutive when you play the, when you, when you get it up to speed. So let me just play this a little bit and you can, you'll, you'll see what I mean. So anyway, so that's the, that's basically the, the second version of this. Um, and we'll do one more. And this is, uh, again, just to round it out, and there's a bunch of variations that we could do off this, but I just want to do a quick quick one just to get your all four fingers moving at the same time. Sometimes people find that that's a, that's a quick way to warm up. So let's do one more where um, this one will actually be divisible by four. So if you're a guy that likes to practice with metronomes, this will work out a little bit better. I'm going to take basically a blues scale combined with this, what I'm going to see as a Dorian scale in the key of D. 
So that's how I'm going to view this in my mind. It doesn't have to be. So I'll just play it slowly instead of talking. Here's the beginning again. So the, all nine of those notes are ex exactly the same as the second exercise that we did. Now I'm going to go back to the B string, pull off all three of these notes. So I'm going to hit the, the C note, pull all the way off to 10. So C, B, and A. So let me just play that so far. And now I'm going to play either the G note on the G string or the, or the G sharp note, depending on which one you like. It doesn't matter which one you... I, I like the G sharp because I like the... I like that blues sound. But here's the sequence. To get back to where we started again, play the 10th fret of the B string and then a hammer on the 13th. And we play the 10th fret of the D string. So I'm just going to play it slow. It'll be much clearer and easier to, uh, to follow when you just see it and hear it. So here we go. That's the sequence. Anyway, so there it is. That's my uh, sound advice number two. Um, have fun with it and happy jamming.